Right now on Denver 7 News at 5 a.m., we do have some breaking news after Denver police shot a person overnight. What led to the exchange with officers? And it's another ozone alert day in our state, but one group says our air quality is so bad it's worth suing over the claims they're bringing to the EPA. Also, should they stay or should they go? That's a big question for Avs free agents right now. Coming off, of course, the Stanley Cup win. We're going to try to build this team uh, back up so we can uh, try and uh, try and repeat this. Yeah, that's what we want, mm -hmm. but we're breaking down the latest roster moves for the Avalanche because it could mean a big payday for some of those players as well. Thanks for joining us on this Thursday morning. I'm Brian Sanders. And I'm Jessica Crawford. Right now, we are turning it over to meteorologist Stacy Donaldson on this ozone alert day, Stacy. Yeah. That's right. We have an ozone action alert day in effect. You'll probably notice the haze all over the front range afternoon highs. They'll be in the 90s again this afternoon. We hit 99 yesterday and we'll still be in the 90s today. Temperatures already in the 60s and 70s as we head out the door this morning. 50s and 60s for the high country. Our temperatures in the 70s through 9 a.m. Then we're in the 80s after that. We'll hit 92 degrees by 1 o'clock, but we're headed to 97 for that afternoon high with a few scattered thunderstorms late in the day. So as we watch those thunderstorms develop in the heat of the day, that will take our temperatures down a little bit, but we're going to be in the mid to upper 90s here 100s up toward Fort Morgan and Sterling. You headed up that way, Justin? Jason? Uh, no, I'm not. No, okay, okay. no, not right now. Um, <laughs> maybe later just to say, hey, guess what? It's 100 right now and I need to move. Uh, right now we do have some construction that is not moving traffic right now. They're holding traffic on the eastbound side. Let me show you the double cameras here. One is showing you that there's no traffic on the eastbound side of I-70. They just picked up some of those cones, so they're trying to open up all lanes. And while they do that, they hold traffic. And now it's starting to creep slowly on that eastbound side, so we'll see in just a little bit some of that eastbound traffic moving here through the tunnel. We will be, as you can see in the map, closing down I-70 and move into that new tunnel Friday night, tomorrow night, uh, and then we're going to use I-25 and I-270 to get around it. That's all the way until Monday morning, so right now those drive times are up a little bit, but if you're just about to leave the house, we actually are going to see decent driving conditions in just a minute. The rest of the drive looks okay, including to that north side. Well, we do have some breaking news this morning after Denver police shot a person overnight in the Globeville neighborhood. They were following a vehicle after getting a call about weapons. When the car stopped, police moved in but were then met with gunfire. Two officers shot back and hit a person. That person is now in critical condition. No officers were hurt. Three other people from that vehicle were taken into custody and at least two more are still on the loose. We have an update to a Denver 7 investigation. San Luis Valley DA Alonzo Payne says he's going to resign. The governor appointed Attorney General Phil Weiser as the interim DA for the 12th Judicial District. We told you yesterday an independent monitor would oversee Payne's office after finding he violated victims' rights. Our Denver 7 investigative team dug into several complaints, including questionable plea deals and not following up with victims as required by law. Payne was facing a recall election because of those complaints. Mesa County's district attorney says that he will seek to revoke Tina Peters bond. Colorado Public Radio reports Peters left the state violating the conditions of her bond. DA Dan Rubenstein says that Peters spoke at an event with the Constitutional Sheriff and Peace Officers Association in Nevada. Peters was arrested on 10 charges earlier this year for allegedly helping an unauthorized person access the country's election equipment. A former elections manager for Peters has been indicted for allegedly tampering with voting equipment. Sandra Brown turned herself in Monday on multiple felony charges. They include suspicion of conspiracy to commit criminal impersonation and attempting to influence a public servant. Firefighters are making good progress on a wildfire burning near Morrison right now. The Snow Creek fire is 75% contained. Crews will be back on the fire line this morning to finish mopping up. But since the Marshall Fire, we are all much more aware of the fire danger in urban areas and neighborhoods. And Golden is starting a series of five meetings tonight. It just updated its community wildfire protection plan. We'll be coming out there with some firefighters with some equipment. We'll be talking about the prevention strategy. Our fire marshal will be coming out and talking about what um, what we can do in the neighborhoods. And then and the reason about coming out to the neighborhoods is it's it's tailored to the fuel types and the topography types that are listed in those particular neighborhoods. We want to make sure that we have an understanding and we can point things out that the homeowners can rectify. Mm -hmm. 
So those meetings are on evenings and weekends. You can find the full schedule on the City of Golden's website. Increasing emissions from the Suncor oil refinery are up for debate. According to a lengthy draft permit filed by the state's Air Pollution Control Division, the Commerce City refinery would be allowed to increase its toxin pollutants by 90 tons. This week, the division is seeking public feedback before submitting the plan to the EPA. Some asked for the permits to be swiftly approved, while environmentalists say Suncor's production disproportionately impacts low-income people of color. Acts of environmental racism are still racist, no matter how many permits are acquired for them. Suncor is a big part of our domestic production and making Colorado an energy exporter and contributing to our nation's energy independence. Despite the various viewpoints, state regulators emphasize the permit will be issued as long as it complies with state and federal law. A decision is expected in the fall. Another hot day for us here across the Front Range, and we do have an air quality alert here for high ozone levels. It's an ozone action alert day. We also have scattered showers off to our west that we're keeping an eye on. But this air quality warning in effect until 4 p.m. this evening for the entire I-25 corridor and a little bit east. Now up in the high country, we have those scattered showers moving on through. These will eventually head down to our area, so we are expecting afternoon highs in the 90s today. Even hotter weather this weekend. I'll have that forecast coming up. And I mean, some wet roads for us up there along Highway 40 to uh, the northern part of the state. Right now we have Washington Street still closed down just north of I-70 right here for that officer involved shooting that we told you about just a little bit just after 47th Avenue. So Broadway just a little bit uh, to the uh, west right there next to I-25 can get you around it. But this little section of Washington Street will be going to be closed down for a little while longer. The way Denver handles low level nonviolent 911 calls is now a model for national legislation introduced by Colorado Senator Michael Bennett. Denver 7's Colette Bordelon joins us live from downtown this morning with how this city program could help other cities around the country. Brian, it's called the STAR program. That stands for Support Team Assisted Response. Basically, the way it works is it sends out an EMT with a behavioral health clinician to respond to those lower-level 911 calls you were just talking about. Those are the ones without any imminent risk really associated with them. So they could be things like mental health issues, substance use disorders, or people experiencing homelessness. The STAR program has responded to thousands of calls since they launched in June of 2020. Our partners at the Denver Post say their strategy will serve as a model for other cities under a new bill introduced by Senator Michael Bennett on Wednesday. Basically, it would fund programs similar to the STAR program in other places. In June of this year, Stanford released the results of a study where they found a drop in crime during the pilot part of our STAR program. Those behind the research say they have evidence that it's possible to reinvent the way we think of a 911 response. They also found the STAR program saved money and called the results extraordinarily promising. But they also say there needs to be more pilot programs and studies to make sure permanent reform is done right. Now on the STAR program's website, it does say as they bring on more staff, they hope to serve the entire city of Denver. Their goal is to be able to respond anywhere in the city seven days a week from the hours of six in the morning to 10 at night. They also say they did buy five new vans to help them out with that response, but because of supply chain issues, they don't have those just yet. They're supposed to be delivered in the spring. We'll also be watching Michael Bennett's bill very closely. Live in Denver, Colette Bordel on Denver 7. Supply chain affecting everybody. Thank you, Colette. The Better Business Bureau is getting multiple complaints about an online ammo shop. What's wrong with the way it asks you to pay? And this is what you would call a paw-thicked wedding. The purpose of this marriage between two senior shelter dogs. 